a holy silence descends upon the room. (laughs) Grace to you and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for being here to attend the annual parish meeting of the Cathedral Parish of St. Philip. The Cathedral of St. Philip is a legally incorporated entity in the state of Georgia. And so we have to formally have a meeting every year that continues our status on those lines, but also to be a holy parish, to be a Christian parish as we have been in the city of Atlanta for a long time. We were the first Episcopal church established in the, di- in the new city of Atlanta. We, our first location was right across the street from the state capitol. If you go down there, Uh, To that corner, you can still see a little plaque that says St. Philip's Church, first location. We weren't made a cathedral until 50 years after that, in about 1892. So I hear, and then came to this location in 1932. I hereby call to order the parish meeting of the Cathedral of St. Philip, and I'll do so by praying a particular prayer that is prayed by our worship service both on Good Friday and at the great vigil of Easter. Someone has propped the door open. Now we've got to shut it again. That's not how the prayer goes. (laughs) The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you all for being here. We cancel all of our classes for the most part during this time, though we still have a children's class that uh, occupies their eager imagination and attention. So I thank Lisa McNamara and others who are uh, organizing that class. The rest of us are here. Oh, some of the choir is not here as always, trying to get ready for the 1115 service. But thank you for being here. We go through some particular motions and we go through some elections and we hear reports from myself, from the treasurer, and from the outgoing warden. So the first order of business is to appoint a recording secretary. And I hereby appoint Jeannie Mahood as the uh, recording secretary. I hope uh, all of you have come to know Jeannie in the past several years. She uh, knows everything about everything in the church. So ask her any question before you ask me. She knows it all. (laughs) Um, I think that appointment goes without a vote. Jeannie, are you willing to be the recording secretary? Thank you so much. Jeannie is also the recording secretary for our chapter meetings. We have a legal secretary who was part of the executive committee, and that person has been Andy O'Brien. But Jeannie records the minutes of each of our chapter meetings pretty much every month. And then once those meetings are approved the following month, they're always open. If anybody wants to read the minutes or have access to them, they're in Jeannie's office. And the, first, the next motion that we need a vote on is to approve the minutes of the 2021 annual parish meeting last year. Those minutes are always available in Jeannie's office as well. Um, I usually look for a motion to see if anybody would like to move that we dispense with reading those minutes at this meeting. <laughs> Looks like Barbara Basel, Barbara Basil has moved and I heard David second. Um, any discussion? All in favor of dispensing with reading the minutes of last year's parish meeting, say aye. Aye. Oppose. Abstain. It carries. Thank you for your vote. We've got 1115 service that we have to make later this morning. And now I want to thank the uh, 2020 wardens and executive committee. These are the people who uh, 
set, help with me and George, help set the agenda every month. Um, they have been serving very well. They are Senior Warden Ward Bondurant, Junior Warden Sam Wilmoth, Treasurer Bill Monroe, uh, would you stand while I introduce everybody else? And Andy O'Brien, who is here, has been our secretary. And our two at-large members, there's Andy, our two at-large members have been Merritt Dyke and Melody Palmore. So thank you for your service in this past, on this past year. You didn't stand, but we see you. And now I want to thank the outgoing chapter class of the year 2022 and the outgoing warden, because these people have really served magnificently and gracefully during a time, most of which covered the pandemic, most of which covered our dealing with COVID in this parish. It wasn't a normal time for a lot of our chapter meetings. It was very tense at times. It was awkward. We're all struggling through lots of different issues. So I want to especially applaud the outgoing class of 2022, uh, and their last meeting is a week from now in December. Would you please stand as I call your names? Most of you, I think, are here. Catherine Howell, Will Klein, Andy O'Brien, Hubert Tate, and Sam Wilmoth, our outgoing warden. Thank you for being the outgoing chapter members. Next time we have a pandemic, we'll make sure you run for office. <laughs> and now we have the voting piece of the meeting, which is to um, hear the, rep the report of the, or re review the report of the nominating process and um, elect new members of the chapter. The uh, process goes very well. Ward Bondrant served as the chair of the nominating committee this year. The nominating committee always includes the outgoing chapter class plus a representative of next year's chapter class and the representative from the following year's chapter class, and then three at-large members of the parish who can't run for chapter but who help us come up with six names. We come up with six names that we put before you this day, once the chapter has approved them, and that becomes the slate. So the nominating committee this year, besides Ward Bondra, were the people I just mentioned, Catherine Howell, Will Klein, Andy O'Brien, Hubert Tate, Sam Wilmoth, the 2023 class representative, Mary Caroline Cravens, the 2024 class representative, Rod Bunn, and the out-large members were Teddy Bear, Avon Long, and Brent Rosengren. Thank you to the nominating committee who uh, came up with these folks. And they are proposing six members for the new chapter class and then a person for junior warden that I'll explain the process for that in a second. So let me present those people who are official nominees for the chapter class of 2025. And as I say their names, would each of you who are here, I think most of you are, please come forward. They are Jeff DeLong, who I saw earlier there, Ann Matthews, Kobe Nixon, come, come all the way to the front. Jeff DeLong, Ann Matthews, Kobe Nixon, Margaret Poe, Janie Sager, and Abby Schultz. These are the official nominees from the nominating committee. Um, I always ask if there are any nominations from the floor. Those are in order. But in order to be in order, a nominee has to be already kind of vetted and made sure that they meet the qualifications. So if you ever want to propose a nominee from the floor, please tell me ahead of time before, <laughs> before the parish meeting. Nevertheless, are there any nominees from the floor? Seeing none, is there a motion that we close nominations for Cathedral Chapter? Will Klein moves. Is there a second? Barbara is our second. All in favor of closing nominations, please say aye. 
Oppose? Abstain? Nominations are closed. Now we actually have the vote for um, the class of 2024? Is that where we are? 2025. It's going to be a long way. <laughs> we have a vote for these members uh, of the Cathedral Chapter Class of 2025. Uh, the persons are Jeff DeLong, Ann Matthews, Kobe Nixon, Margaret Poe, Janie Sager, Abby Schultz. All in favor of those nominees for chapter, please say aye. aye. Oppose? Abstain? It carries. Congratulations. You can return to your seats. We moved to this form of uh, electing, really with just six nominees, about 15 or 20 years ago. It's always awkward in church after church that many of us have been part of. And there's always, uh, there are always really good people whose names are suggested who the nominating committee does not put forward. We call ourselves, the nominating committee sees itself as kind of like the admissions committee for Harvard University or your favorite school, whatever your favorite school might be. They're always great people. It's not about sometimes uh, the, 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 the six who are especially extraordinary. It's six who represent the breadth of the parish, who have different levels of experience and connection, and so it's always a good and, and broad and diverse slate. So thank you for being um, willing to be those nominees and being willing to be on this chapter. About 10 years ago, the cathedral chapter passed a resolution that wardens would serve not one year, but two years, saying, thinking that uh, it takes a year to kind of get in the groove, and um, so we kept the senior warden, which is by tradition of a long time ago, the senior warden each, year, each two years is selected by the rector or dean. I'm actually the dean and the rector of the cathedral parish. And then on alternate years, the parish chooses or elects the junior warden, a senior warden for two years, and then the next year, a junior warden in a kind of staggered term. I consider these wardens of equal stature, if you will. They are the wardens of the cathedral. Though the dean chooses the senior warden, the parish elects the junior warden. Back in the old days, when it was one year term, I would always make sure I appointed the previous year's junior warden to be the senior warden, and it kept things kind of uh, uh, copacetic. But, but now we have a, a, a different uh, style, which, which, which which works very well, but it means that next year we will not have a vote for senior warden. The, uh, the dean will select the senior warden, and then two years from now, we will elect a junior warden. They are, like I say, equal in stature. The only difference is, besides them both joining the executive committee and helping lead the chapter meetings every month, the only difference is if something happens to the rector or dean, who is me right now, then the ecclesiastical authority is the senior warden. Ward prays every day that nothing happens to me, the uh, <laughs> ecclesiastical uh, uh, authority. And of course, a good senior warden in a hurry would, ap would appoint some other priest or something to, to, to be that role. But otherwise, the wardens are, are equal in stature and in leadership authority of, of the parish. So this year, oh, the junior warden has to be from among the existing chapter members. It has to be from the existing chapter members. They have to have a two-year term, which means generally it's from the first-year class of the present chapter. We have six great members of the first-year class of the cathedral chapter, but the nominee being put forward by the nominating commi committee is Melody Palmore. Melody, you're here. Would you want to come stand in front? Thank you for your long trek. <laughs> now, again, I need to make a motion or ask for a motion. Uh, is, are there any nominees from the floor? That it, it has to be somebody from the existing chapter and not the group we just elected um, who, who, is, who would be the uh, junior warden. Are there any nominations from the floor? 
Hearing none, is there a motion? We close nominations. To, from, to, uh, uh, motion to, so moved. Do we um, uh, vote to close nominations? All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstain. It carries. Nominations are closed. All in favor of Melody Palmore being the next year, two year term junior warden of the Cathedral Parish of St. Philip, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. It carries. Congratulations. Very good. Thank you, Melody. And thanks again to all of you who put yourselves forward to, to be on the Cathedral Chapter or any of the great other ministries that make up this outstanding uh, parish. Uh, it really is, as those of you who are new to the chapter realize every year, the cathedral is not like other parishes. It is much larger than the parish I grew up in, St. Paul's Noonan, and chapter members don't get assigned to a particular ministry. The senior warden doesn't necessarily run the finance committee. The junior warden doesn't run the building committee like it was in my parish. The secretary always ran the education program, blah, blah, blah. But this is a complicated and large system, a beautiful and wonderful system. The chapter is really the kind of the board of trustees. They are the overseers, and it's good for the chapter to see the big picture versus one particular element that might be very critical. And we have uh, a great chapter. Um, let me introduce um, to you the continuing members of the cathedral chapter, and then uh, we'll go to the next report. The chapter class of 2023 are these people. If you would stand wherever you are, the chapter class of 2023 are Angelica Banos. I think I don't, don't think I saw her here. Uh, Mary Caroline Cravens, Merritt Dyke, Bill Monroe, Kate Stotts. Keep standing. And then the class of 2024 are Rod Bunn, Sally Burge. Rod is always standing in the back. <laughs> Sally Burge, Sarah Chapman, Tucker Mahoney, Melody Palmore, and Ted Park. Thank you for your continuing service on the Cathedral Chapter. Let's turn to the reports. We'll have a report from the outgoing warden. One of the, one of the uh, requirements of the outgoing warden is that they get to give the report. Then we'll have a report from the treasurer and then a report from me. So I'm glad to call on, uh, again, Sam Wilmoth, who is leaving the chapter, but also junior warden. And he, too, has been junior warden during pretty much a completely COVID pandemic time. Sam Wilmoth. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Dean. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. This is the theme of the 2022 stewardship campaign at the cathedral, and it is also a succinct summary of this past year. While the year began with a return to certain COVID pandemic protocols, renewed concern over variants, the continued spread of disease, we nevertheless experienced great things at the Cathedral of St. Philip in 2022. We, we announced a return to ordinary worship with the Feast of the Presentation in February. The season of Lent and its culmination in Holy Week and Easter Sunday saw attendance numbers reach near pre-COVID levels. And the recent celebration of All Saints Day brought over 1,000 parishioners to church, the highest Sunday attendance outside of Christmas and Easter since 2019. In the midst of these, we baptized 77 new Christians. We confirmed 43 into our church. We celebrated the lives of 54 faithful departed, and over 50 of, 50 of us spent a weekend of fellowship and fun together at the annual parish retreat at Canuga in May. Like we, <clears throat> you just heard, the cathedral is a complex organization. It encompasses not only 6,500 members and a nearly 15-acre campus, but also a preschool, counseling center, farmer's market, thrift house, bookstore, and senior housing facility. 
All of these parochial entities contribute to the vibrant life of our church, and they've also experienced great things this year. The success of this year can, of course, be expressed in the report of the treasurer or the financial statements provided in the printed report. But the core of the cathedral and the ultimate source of its lifeblood is a Christ-centered community of people. It's you and me, our volunteers, staff, and of course, our clergy. To each of you, we say thank you. Thank you for your time and talent, your energy, your dedication. It is because of you and your leadership that we can report that the Cathedral's foundation is strong and positioned for even greater growth in the years to come. The Lord has done great things indeed. We look forward to seeing everyone in church on Sundays and throughout the, the week next year, and we look forward to continuing to serve Atlanta with grace, excellence, excellence and hospitality. That ends the official warden report this morning, and like the dean said, by custom, I am delivering it today because I'm the outgoing warden. 2022, concluding my two-year term as junior warden and three-year term on the chapter. I'd like to take, take a moment then to say just a few more words. I'm sure that most of us are aware that the chapter is a unique body relative to other vestries in the Episcopal Church. Like Dean Candler said, it's more of a board of trustees than a management board. My grandfather was a senior warden at a small parish outside of Richmond, Virginia. And when a wall needed painting, he showed up on Saturday morning with a paintbrush. I'm very fortunate to say I was never required to perform manual labor. <laughs> David Rocchio is probably happy about that too. <laughs> However, during the past three years and through the pandemic, we were required to make difficult decisions concerning issues that few, if any of us, had ever faced. Decisions over putting masks on in church, having in-person worship at all, the distribution of bread and wine at communion, among many others. And while I'm not confident we made the correct decision 100% of the time, I do believe we made the best decisions we could based on the information that we had at the time. And I believe that the decisions we made, especially the decisions made by our clergy leadership and lay staff, have been bearing fruit all year as we see a return to pre-COVID attendance and our general enthusiasm for our church. As I leave the chapter, I'd like to say thank you to Dean Candler, George Maxwell, the entire staff, lay and ordained. The cathedral is blessed to have amazing leadership. I was also fortunate to work with two great senior wardens, Del King and Ward Bondurant, great treasurers, Haven Long and Bill Monroe, and all of the wonderful chapter members, past and present. Lastly, thank you especially to my wife, Lynn, who gave up many a night when I had yet another church meeting, and by extension, thank you to my mother-in-law and father-in-law for giving up many of their nights with our three kids when I had yet another church meeting. Congratulations to the new, the new chapter class and the new junior warden, and I look forward to 2023 being another great year for the Cathedral of St. Philip. Thank you. Great job, great job. Our meeting will conclude in about five or 10 minutes and we're gonna stick around. If anybody has questions, especially to Sam or to me or to Bill Monroe as treasurer, the questions are probably gonna be best answered after the meeting is over, we'll be, we'll be hanging around. Thank you, Sam, excellent report. And now we have an official report from the treasurer of the parish, Bill Monroe, Bill. Good morning, my name is Bill Monroe and it's been my honor to serve as your treasurer this past year. I'll try to be efficient given the cathedral finances uh, are in great shape, um, but I will not be offended if any of you take this opportunity to maybe grab another cup of coffee and get a little extra <laughs> dose of ca caffeine. Finances can be a little dry or as my children say, boring. Um, but I'd like to begin by thanking Dean Candler and Canon Maxwell and the entire cathedral staff for their direction, discipline and continued stewardship uh, of our financial resources. A special thanks also to Charles Jacobs and Milena Dixon for the excellent job they do in the finance department, managing the finances of not only the cathedral, 
but many of uh, the several parochial entities as well. This is a large operation with many moving parts, and Charles and Milena are excellent stewards of our finances. Thanks also to the members of the Finance Committee. Their attendance, input, and guidance throughout the year have been a great help to me personally and play a large role in, um, in the effectiveness and efficiency of the Finance Office. During this annual parish meeting, we review the financial statements for the year ended 2021 and report on our current year-to-date position. And let me start by saying that our cathedral continues to be in sound financial condition. You will see a summary of the cathedral's finances in the back inside cover of your annual report. Uh, and luckily, I will not go through all of those numbers, but I'll, I'll hit on a couple of the important ones. For fiscal year 2021, our operating revenue for the 12 months ended 1231 was $4,659,441. Our expenses for the same period were $4,449,757, resulting in an operating surplus of 209684 uh, which is obviously a great way to end the financial year and has allowed us to reinvest those funds into the cathedral's operations this year. I'll note that we have a number of financial controls in place to help maintain the accuracy of the cathedral's financials, including the requirement of an annual financial audit. This May, the accounting firm of Smith & Howard conducted the audit of the cathedral's 2021 financial statements and issued an unqualified opinion of its financial position. For those of us that are not accountants, uh, an unqualified opinion is good and means that in Smith & Howard's judgment, the financial statements shown are fairly and appro appropriately presented. Now turning to our 2022 year-to-date financials, through October of this year, we are slightly ahead of budget and doing well with both revenue and expenses, especially in this inflationary environment. But it's important to note that December is always budgeted to be our strongest financial month of the year and allows us to re reverse our year-to-date uh, deficits, which are always around a million dollars at this point in the year. So we ask you to please be responsive and fulfill your pledge commitments before year-end so we can close the deficit and maintain our strong financial condition. As it relates to our current balance sheet, the cathedral remains debt-free and has increased its operating reserves over the past few years to maintain a strong balance sheet, allowing us to cover unexpected events that may come our way. Finally, looking ahead to next year, the finance department, clergy, and staff, and the finance committee are finalizing the 2023 budget and we'll present it to the chapter for approval at the December 13th meeting. The majority of the changes year over year will be managing higher operating and program cost inflation while providing market compensation to our clergy and staff. You should have received a mailing by now, uh, respectfully asking for your commitment to the 2023 campaign, and you may be hearing directly from our stewardship committee. Please be receptive to their calls to learn more about new initiatives and opportunities in 2023. I want to thank each of you for your gifts of time, talent, and financial support. All of these contributions strengthen our community and help the cathedral to deliver grace, excellence, and hospitality to all we serve. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. I have, a, uh, I have just a few words to say by way of my report, uh, but before I give my report, I've got, I think it, it might be good to so see the visual presentation of our past year uh, before my concluding words, which are very, very brief. Um, and I, before I ask Dan to roll the tape, I, I want to take a moment to really thank Dan Murphy uh, and our complete audiovisual team, but Dan Murphy especially. <laughs> Dan and his assistant, Sarah Craig Goodell, are the ones who put together the communications that come out here from here uh, every day, whether it's Cathedral Times or uh, E-Times or all the things that go on and all the video things that go on. And when we have guests who are using the cathedral, using these microphones and using all the video rooms, it's Dan who's on top of it. And he and with Brant, who does a lot of the nave thing, and Joseph Gould and uh, who's over there? Patrick? Uh, well, yeah. There are lots of people who really make sure 
um, that we are the presence in the um, internet atmosphere as well as the physical presence. My comments today are going to be about being in the flesh, incarnation, but because um, we've missed being in the flesh. I'm not going to give them to you. I better be quiet. But we've got a great team that helps us to be present online. And that is one way we have really excelled. I got a check last week from a couple who goes to another Episcopal church outside of Atlanta. And they have, for the last three years, been watching our services on television. A thousand dollar check. Totally unsolicited. There are people who are benefiting from our ministry and your ministry who are not necessarily here every Sunday. So thanks, Stan, for your being able to put all this together. Let's get sort of a memory, uh, our memories refreshed with this special presentation that, uh, that Dan has put together.
Thank you. In case you didn't recognize, that took us pretty much from January through last week in terms of a collage of all that goes on here. It's, it's, it's nicely done. The phrase that I've used in my annual report, which you can read later, is that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So my word today is thank you for helping the Word become flesh here at the Cathedral of St. Philip. It's good that our annual parish meeting happens near Christmas. When we hear that verse from the Gospel of John, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, full of grace and truth. That continues to be our ministry, and one of the hardest pieces of the pandemic was not being able to be in person. A lot of us we're, we're glad we weren't in person. We were trying to be safe and be cautious and be careful. Nevertheless, we we're missing an important part of what it means to be the body of Christ. We are supposed to be a physical body. We can do a lot of things without touching, without being present, but there are a lot of things we cannot do unless we're touching and unless we're present. This year has been amazingly gratifying as we've seen the word becoming flesh again. We thought we had it last year, then another wave came. And remember last Christmas, you never knew which clergy were going to be here every Sunday. And they'd say um, George Maxwell was celebrating, but it didn't look like George up there. And then I was supposed to preach, but that wasn't me. We were all going through turns of either having COVID or being exposed to COVID through our family or friends. And every week was a different uh, and same with parishioners. We never knew why somebody was not here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we decided we had to not have our chapter retreat. And we decided that the Feast of the Presentation, first Sunday in February this year, would be our dramatic return. And we made that feast a fun time. That's the um, 40 days after uh, Christmas, where it's called Candlemas, it's a Feast of Candles, a Feast of Light. That was such a fun time that we're thinking of doing it again this year. Uh, make it a special feast day of the cathedral. You know, January and February when it's cold and miserable and you don't know what's going on. Bring a candle to church. So that may be our new return to uh, light during this season, a kind of transferred feast of the presentation. It's always on February 2nd, but we may well be transferring it to the first Sunday in February, just as a way to rejoice with, with light. This past year, that was one of our first big returns to church. And then from then on, it kept on growing through the uh, parish retreat, through that tremendous barbecue we had in end of August and first part of September. St. Francis Day, people came, and uh, we didn't count the animals, but we would have had millions if we had counted the animals. <laughs> and as uh, Sam said, on All Saints Sunday, we had, if you include all the Sunday services, we had over a thousand people on a, sun, on a church service that was not Christmas or Easter for the first time in three years. People are returning to church, but people are also returning to meetings and gatherings and ministries. Um, and, and it's fun. It's fun to be the body of Christ. It's fun to be with each other. So thank you all for helping make the Word become incarnate. That's our mission, to make this Word of grace, Word of hospitality, Word of excellence, the Word of the gospel, making it become in the flesh. We're going to keep on growing, as I mentioned in the sermon for, for today. Um, it's, we, we are never too small. 
if we have the spirit of God living inside of us. We are never too small. That's the spirit that brings a shoot from the stump of Jesse. We've, uh, we've been a stump. We are growing, growing, growing into a beautiful Jesse tree. So thanks for being part of that. I want to introduce to you some of the clergy, but before I do, I want to introduce two people who are about to be ordained deacon. They don't know I'm going to mention them today. One may not be here, but our parishioner, Hannah Kelly, is soon to be ordained deacon in the Episcopal Church. I think that's in one week, two weeks. Um, you may see her around as a, uh, a, a transitional deacon. I don't think she's here this morning. I didn't ask her to be here. But the other person who's been part of our community is also going to be ordained in two weeks, and he does not know I'm going to ask him to stand up. Salmoon Bashir. Salmoon, right here. Sal Moon is from Pakistan. Many of you have gotten to know him. He'll be ordained in two weeks, and he, we don't know where he'll end up in his ministry, but for the time being, he's here. So we look forward to seeing him with us as well in the, uh, in the days and weeks to come. We are blessed, and I am blessed, to have excellent colleagues, excellent clergy colleagues and canon colleagues in this place. Um, the canons and clergy exercise uh, leadership over large pieces of this, of this body of Christ, and we are different. We may sometimes agree, sometimes we disagree. We all go forward with our diversity, and every year at the parish meeting, I ask uh, my colleagues to join me and, and remind you that um, each of us has a special grace, a special gift, um, and Lord knows none of us has all the gifts, but one of us probably does. So I uh, urge every member of the congregation to make sure you know at least one of the clergy or canons of the cathedral. Some of you know all of us, which is great, um, but make sure you know at least one of the persons who is here in a, in a sacramental way. Let me ask them to come forward. Dale Ottelman has already gone to rehearse the choir, I'm pretty sure. Um, we are joined today by Deacon Juan Sandoval and Thee Smith but also by Canons Kathy Zappa, Canon Lauren Holder, Canon Julia Michener, Juan and Fee come forward. Uh, our brother George Maxwell is not here this morning. He does not have COVID. <laughs> but he is not feeling well and he's um, taking care of his, his mother. But give him your prayers today. And he too is among us serving this, uh, this beautiful parish. So uh, with my colleagues' help, um, I'm going to ask us to uh, stand and receive a, a blessing as we adjourn the annual parish meeting of the Cathedral of St. Philip. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with this parish forever. Amen. Amen. We are adjourned. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.